y'all i am michelle Menzel. welcome back to my channel i'm going to share with you all this video clip and then i'm going to come back and we're going to talk about it so let's get into it why am i worrying about africa for 20,000 miles away what good is that for me you know why because as africa goes so goes all african people wherever i go european jews are respected wherever i go european jews got power you know why because Israel is respected and Israel got power. Wherever I go, Chinese are respected. Chinese are in an economic power position. Chinese are always upheld and treated with respect and reverence. You know why? Because China is powerful. Why do East Indians get respect around the world? Because India is powerful. And guess what? Wherever you go in the world, African people are disrespected and ignored even in Africa. You will never be respected. I don't care where you move to in this world until Africa is respected. That's why Africa matters. You want to know why black folks get killed by the police in broad daylight and nothing happens? Who going to speak up for you? What African country going to stand up and say the next time you kill one of mine in your country, don't come over here looking for no gas. Next time you kill one of mine in your country, don't come over here looking for no oil. Next time you kill one of mine in your country, don't come over here looking for no diamonds or no coltan. Next time you kill one of mine in your country, you ain't getting another piece of mineral from under my soil. Because remember, the African continent is the only continent that can survive without any other continent. No other continent can survive without Africa. There is no military without Africa. There's no atomic bombs without Africa. There's no cell phone or no internet without Africa. The most essential minerals necessary for the military and technological age are under the ground in Africa. Can you name a single country, Africa, Central and South America, anywhere in the Caribbean where we are in control of our own economics? Anybody? There's not one. There is no black economy on earth ran by black people. And there is no liberation for African people until we get control of our economics. So you may or may not know who Dr. Umar Johnson is. He is uh, definitely a pan-Africanist. He definitely is pro-black. He speaks on a lot of issues pertaining to the black community. And he always talks about the importance of the black community having that strong connection to the African continent in order for the black community um, to move forward. Um, and so in this video clip, he is talking about why it's important for the African for the African continent to gain that power and why it's important for the world to see the power of Africa because when the world sees that Africa is powerful and when Africa starts speaking on behalf of the African diasporans then we definitely will see the change in how the world is going to treat African diasporans and that is all over the world not just in the United States of America in this video clip he talks about africa being the most powerful continent in the world which we all know that i think a lot of people in the world don't know how powerful africa is they go to these african countries they see the african continent and they see what the west wants you to see they see what they are showing uh you on television they're showing you the very poor parts of these countries they're showing you that there that there's violence going on in some of these countries they're always showing the negative that's going on in these countries and then that's what we have believed we are we have believed that Africa is poor we have believed that the people are poor we have believed all of these negative stereotypes that has been put upon us in order for us to think less of the African people and for us to think less of the African continent now this video is not talking about the factors that are to blame for the reason why Africa is underdeveloped right now. There are a lot of factors that we can go on and talk about forever as far as the factors that's keeping Africa in the, the in the place that it, that it is in. But we definitely know that one of the major factors in, in it being the way it is, of course, is colonization, more, most definitely. And of course, how the West continues to come to these countries and come to the, the African continent and take, 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 and not leaving anything else for the people. Um, so there are, there 
there are a lot of factors, but the West is definitely a factor. Colonization is definitely a factor. And uh, all of these things combined is a reason why Africa is not as developed as uh, all, all these other nations and why it's not as developed as it should be. Now, we all have seen or may, may not have seen Wakanda, which basically them showing what Africa would have been if people would have left it the heck alone. It would have been a, a powerful, powerful continent with all of these advanced technologies, with all of this, you know, this, you know, just so much that, uh, you know, was taken from them and stolen from them. And of course, they have never had that opportunity or, or nothing has really allowed for them to get to where they could be. Um, and so that definitely, it seems like what these African countries are trying to get to, especially some of these new leaders that are coming into play in some of these African countries are trying to move these African countries forward and trying to get it to where they don't have to rely on aid. They don't have to rely on the West to make them better or to improve them that they're really going to start relying on themselves and the, the resources at, that they have as leverage to say, hey, we have what you need. So since that's the case, we're able then to make these demands. If you don't meet these demands, then we're gonna cut you off from these major resources that you need in order for your country to continue to function properly. So what are y'all thoughts on the African continent speaking on the behalf of the African diasporans? Um, in the, at the beginning of the video, he, he talked about that you know you're not disrespecting the chinese you're not disrespecting indians you're not disrespecting jews you're not di disrespecting the world it's not disrespecting these other ethnic groups if they are disrespected then there's going to be consequences that come of that and in the united states of america we can definitely see that happening uh, especially when black people got very angry when Asian, the Asian community, the anti-crime uh, bill was passed for the Asian community due to uh, all that was going on with them uh, violence put up, um, being put upon them uh, due to the COVID situation. And so the uh, United States put in an anti a uh, crime bill for the Asian community and black people were wondering where was our bill? Why has our bill not been passed that are, that is protecting black people from violence? And why is it that there are always groups ahead of us that are getting all these benefits and are getting all these advantages and then getting all these opportunities and why do we still seem to be in the same place the government is not really trying to help us at all and it's not just in the united states that we see this thing happening this type of attitude is also happening on the african continent so dr umar is making an argument basically saying that when the african continent when they end up getting respected, when they end up getting powerful to the point where people understand and know that they have some type of leverage, then that would then trickle down to all the African diasporans around the world where the world will start, will start to respect the African diasporans because they're going to have respect for the African countries. And so what do y'all think about that? Do y'all think that the African continent should be speaking on the behalf of the African diasporans? Do you feel like that the African continent, once they get to be a powerful nation, which they will become, um, that it, it, in turn, that will be a, an advantage to the African diasporans around the world. So my take on that is that in order for the African African continent to be able to speak on the behalf of African diasporans of course yes they have to have some type of power they have to have some type of a competitiveness among these other nations to the point where these nations will listen when they speak and I, I think that we are gradually seeing that happening like Dr. Umar said in his video Without the resources that the African continent is given to these other nations, there's no way that they will be able to survive. These other nations know they cannot adequately or effectively survive without the African continent, which is the reason why they are trying their best to continue on with this relationship. If they did not think that Africa had anything to offer, then they would not waste their time. These countries would not be wasting their time try to build some sort of relationship with the African continent if they didn't feel like they had something to gain. So since that's the case, and Africa do, does have that much leverage 
they need to use that as much as possible in order to continue to gain that power and i think that is what we're seeing happening right now we want equal we want equality all around we don't want to no longer be mistreated we no longer want to be disrespected we no longer want to be looked at as less than all these other countries we have something to offer we have something to give and and we are demanding that you give it to us and that is definitely what we're seeing a lot of people in these african countries a lot of leaders in these african countries are speaking out and they are trying to move these African countries forward. And I think Dr. Umar in, in, is saying in there, when that happens, um, you know, what's going to happen with the African diasporans? Will the African continent uh, speak up on their behalf? I think that that would be definitely be an, an ultimate power play because I think that's, like you said, that's the reason why these other groups are up on top because it's not just the continent it's all over the world if you are you know an asian all over the world you know you're getting that same treatment no matter where you are and i think that the power will continue to increase once the african continent also includes the african diasporans around the world as far as speaking on their behalf as much as possible and i think that's where the connection lies a lot of times we forget that in order for there to be strength there has to be numbers we have to increase where we are uh we have to increase the people within it as well in order for us to get to where we're unified and i think in, in order for all that to take place the African continent at one point or another is going to have to to say something on the behalf of the African diaspora as far as speaking up and saying, hey, the violence that we're seeing, things that, that we're seeing take, taking place against these people has got to stop. Um, and I, I do feel like that that is something that needs to take place. Now, when I was looking at some of the comments, you know, people always have something to say. And so I'm going to read some of the comments to you all. And then I'm going to talk about kind of how is all that fitting in, how people are feeling about the African continent, speaking on behalf of the African diasporans, um, and why is that something that may or may not work. So there was one uh, comment that says, well said, my bro, problem is you. Our diaspora, Kith and Ken, are the, I don't know what that is, start by undermining us and are prepared to be used against us. Um, and then another comment says that black have to respect themselves, brother, before someone respects them. Um, and so basically, uh, there has to be an, an equal partnership going on. Um, the African diasporans are also going to have to realize that they do have a connection to the African continent, whether or not they want to admit that connection or not. There are some people in the African diaspora who want to continue to push this narrative that they're they're not connected to the African continent. But I do believe that once the African continent gets to, to be a powerful continent that it will be, and it starts talking for the African diasporans, those African diasporans that are doubting, they'll have a change of tune because they will see that things are changing for them. People have to see change. They have to see things are, are going in their benefit. They can't really say, oh, well, this might happen, this might happen. And especially when they've been waiting for these things for a very long time. So people in the African diaspora, particularly in the United States of America, who are still having to suffer through so much due to them being black, um, you know, they're going to have to see that, hey, this is happening. This is changing. And so a lot of them will change their tune when they see that things are improving for them. And I think that's that's basically where that comes from. I honestly believe in the connection of the two. I, I, my, my channel is all about really connecting the African diaspora, uh, particularly in the U.S., to the African continent. And the Af African diasporans around the world need to have that connection to the African uh, continent in order for us to see some type of change, in order for there to be some kind of uh, power and strength and ultimately a way to really gain that respect that Dr. Umar Johnson is talking about in this video. So tell me down below, what do you all think about the video uh, clip that Dr. Umar said as far as uh, the African continent getting their respect and ultimately when they get their respect, it would trickle down to the African diasporans around the world and that the African diasporans around the world will see a change 
once the power of Africa kicks in. All right, I am Michelle Maisel. That's all I have on today's issue. I will see you all in the next video. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Bye.